Hey guys, I'm Justin Lowry and this is Develop and Process. This is a show where we ask the bigger questions about photography and living the creative life. So for the first uh, show, I want to talk about uh, I basically want to introduce you guys to me and uh, share my story with you uh, because um, nothing else that I have to say is relevant if you don't uh, kind of know where I'm coming from. So I'd like to kind of uh, start with that. So basically, I've been a photographer for 12 years, th no, 13 years now. And I got started back in 2005. I went to... Washington DC on a history trip. I was uh, a secondary ed major in college studying education and um, my fields were science and history. So one of my history professors took us on a trip, a road trip to explore everything in the whole Washington DC area. We also went to Philadelphia. We visited Independence Hall. Uh, we visited Gettysburg. Um, we visited Antietam. Uh, we went to the Capitol, the White House, the Washington Monument, the Lincoln Memorial, the Korean War Memorial, uh, World War II Memorial. We took a guided, a staff guided tour of the White House. We went to the Confederate Capitol in Virginia. We went to uh, the church where Patrick Henry gave his Give Me Liberty or Give Me Death speech. Mount Vernon, Was uh, George Washington's home, and we toured all, all that whole property. We went to Monticello. Uh, we went to James Madison's house. We went to Thomas Jefferson's house. And uh, we toured those properties and it was just really a really interesting experience. And uh, we stood on Gettysburg where the soldiers were getting fired at during the war Civil War. And it was just such an incredible experience. Um, we also went to Jamestown and Williamsburg, which are these towns where they've they do historical reenactment like full time. Uh, you can go there and you can see, you can walk on the boats that sailed to Jamestown where some of the first settlers uh, came in the 1600s. And in Williamsburg, it's a huge colony town that's completely like from the 1700s, uh, but you can go there today and, and uh, spend time there as though you're in the 1700s. So we experienced all this. And at the time I had a Casio four megapixel point and shoot camera. And so uh, it had terrible low light performance, no manual controls, uh, you know, it was just really a total mess. And so I didn't, and I didn't know anything about photography, nothing. And I used that camera to try and capture my memories because I have really uh, kind of bad spatial memory. I have a really good memory for facts and information, but not very good for spatial memory in places but places have always meant a lot to me. So I really wanted to capture this and I just totally failed. I mean, the images were just awful. So uh, I went home, you know, told my family about it that summer on summer break from college and my dad pulled out his Nikon FE. So this is uh, the Nikon FE uh, that was my dad's. And um, he basically gave me this camera and he told, told me the, the basics of aperture, shutter speed, film speed, and all of that, the exposure triangle, and just let me play with the camera. And I ended up spending $400 on film that summer. Shooting film and uh, was pretty expensive. So uh, at the time I didn't really have the funds for that. So I literally figured it would be smarter to buy an Nikon uh, digital camera. So I bought a D70. Uh, and switch to digital. People started seeing my photos and I was sharing them on Flickr and stuff like that. And uh, everybody that saw them was reacting to them. And um, so they started asking me to shoot weddings and you know portraits for people or you know just different photo shoots that needed done. And I also second shot for some wedding photographers. And you know if you're not careful, uh, and you, if you are getting into photography, you kind of get sucked into the wedding industry almost by accident because there's so much money there and there's so much demand and you can just get sucked into it real quick. So that happened to me. I, I started second shooting for other photographers and started freelancing, doing weddings and portraits and engagements and all that kind of stuff, commercial work. I shot food for restaurants. Um, and I was trying to get better at photography and I knew I needed to learn a lot more. So. There was this one wedding photographer who was really successful and I at the time sort of looked up to him 
And so at the time I was asking if I could assist for him. So I was just carrying his camera gear and switching lenses and memory cards for him. And uh, he was just kind of showing me the ropes. And then eventually he asked me, um, like several months later, uh, to second shoot a wedding for him. And this was the first time I was actually shooting with him, like on a professional level. And, but I was really inexperienced and kind of naive at the time. So like, I, I didn't really understand the legalities of like contracts and, and uh, you know, setting expectations and all that, managing relationships and business and all that at the time. So I just agreed to do it because I trusted the guy, you know, and, um, but basically I ended up working sun up to sundown, you know, and then staying until almost midnight. And it was like this horrible, horrible wedding. I mean, it was just total chaos and mayhem and it was really obnoxious and I had a pounding migraine the whole day. And some of the time I got, I was so sick, I had to like go in the bathroom and just sit on the toilet with my head in my hands for like 10 minutes just to kind of be able to stand up and walk again without throwing up. I mean, it was pretty bad. And, um, and then he made me ride on the party bus and all of that kind of stuff while feeling like that. And uh, so anyways, I was there for maybe 12 to 14 hours all told and uh, shooting like nonstop. And anyway, then I, you know, edited the files and did my deliverables and all that, finished everything on time. And I gave him the stuff and, uh, you know, I expect to get paid, you know. And four or five weeks went by and he just kind of kept making excuses and, and kind of blowing me off and stuff. And then finally, like about five or six weeks later, it was quite a while after, it may have been longer. He, I get this text from him and he's like, hey, meet me out front of the college where you go and so i go out there and he drives up rolls the window down chucks a 50 dollars bill out the window and drives off and um i'd put in like 14 hours of skilled labor at that point and plus given him all my files my raws everything all the work i had done and i'd gone through like the most hellish wedding to to to, to do that and just <laughs> To see like how little he respected me as a photographer, as an artist, as a professional, but also just in general as a human being. And it probably doesn't sound like a huge deal, but I really thought about this for months. And um, you know, I spent a lot of time doing some introspection and just thinking and praying about it. And essentially, um, I guess I felt like I needed to become something and someone better than what I was seeing around me in the creative industry. And, you know, I guess it was just a series of bad experiences and whatnot, but uh, because that wasn't one, just one of them, it was one of many uh, different things that happened that were similar in, in those sort of years and months. And I decided to make a, a decision to never make a major life uh, choice based on money or with money as the principal deciding factor, especially in issues that affect people um, and people's lives. And um, because I, I realized that the core issue of what had bothered me so much was that we should be using money to make people rather than using people to make money. And that's all, really what it's all about. Money is a, an expendable commodity that exists to serve a purpose. It's not the end all be all. And whenever it becomes the biggest thing in our lives, it tends to destroy everything around us. It was just a question of priorities. So I stayed in the wedding industry for about five years after that happened. And I, in retrospect, it was probably a mistake because I really don't think I was cut out for it. I was flying all over the country, uh, shooting uh, weddings, events, engagements, commercial gigs, you know, all over the United States. And um, over the course of those five years, I shot between one and two million images. And I worked for an incredible list of clients and, um, you know, in many ways, it was incredibly rewarding. I got to see so many things that I would have never seen if I hadn't been a photographer. 
and I'm grateful for those experiences. But uh, towards the end of the five years, it was really diving into the, the worst part of the recession as well, uh, which I think played into it. I had a string of kind of nightmare uh, clients and uh, basically in one summer, had four or five clients not pay their bills. Um, they still wanted the work, of course, but they didn't want to pay their bills. And um, I lost $11,500 in one summer. And the worst of it hit the week before I was supposed to fly to California from New York for my own wedding and take my wife on a honeymoon. And uh, it just, it stung so bad to have, you know, clients that I trusted just completely you know, rip me off like that. I had to sell off all of my photography gear to physically make ends meet and, uh, you know, get married and provide for my wife. And uh, fortunately I had graphic design and web design that I was also doing. Um, and I was having better results with that as far as the clients were concerned in certain respects. And so, I ended up going completely out of photography. I just dropped photography entirely and sold all my gear. Um, and the reason I was okay with that in the moment, other than just the forced necessity of it, was that um, I felt like the, the photography industry had destroyed photography for me, it had sucked all the joy out of something I had absolutely loved and been incredibly passionate about. And um, I no longer enjoyed it whatsoever. It was just something I dreaded. And so um, I quit photography entirely and walked away from it. Um, so two years went by. Uh, my wife and I lived in California and things started to pick up. I got new clients. I did better. Um, the economy was a lot healthier in California than it was where we lived. Uh, we didn't live in the city. We lived in upstate. And um, so things, yeah, took off. And I really felt like I needed photography in my life. It, I needed to be creative in my own personal life. I needed to be expressive and creating personal work. And I hadn't been doing that. I'd just been doing client work. So I decided to get into photography again. And believe it or not, the thing that got me into photography in the first place uh, when I was in New York, uh, before I got all those clients, was nature photography. Um, I grew up in the woodlands of the American Northeast and I spent all my time in the woods and I absolutely love nature. Um, I got to know it super well. And so that's what I'm passionate about. And so I decided to get back into photography for the sole purpose of making fine art landscape images. And I bought a new set of gear focused entirely on that. Um, at the time it was a Canon 6D and I was one of the first photographers to uh, be shooting with it when it just came out. Um, and I started producing work again. And of course I had the photography experience. So I started publishing new work with all this inspiration I had. And it took off immediately. Um, within the first six months or a year, um, Canon, um, well actually not Canon, um, the senior editor of Popular Photography Magazine contacted me and wanted to do an interview with me. And then um, they ran a story on me and then that story ended up getting syndicated by Popular Science, um, Popular Photography, American Photo. Canon licensed it as well for an ad campaign. Um, so I got a nice royalty check from Canon promoting the 6D. So it really took off and um, I just kept, you know, cranking out new work and, uh, you know, establishing social media presences and everything. Um, and before you know it, I got sucked into the culture of Instagram and you know, the social media scene online. And the demand there was for these ultra saturated, ultra contrasty scenes in epic light of famous locations of, you know, widely repeated established compositions um, that were essentially knockoffs of work done by, you know, quote unquote, famous uh, landscape photographers. And just really getting into focus stacking, exposure blending, Photoshop actions, you know, warping, cloning, uh, you know, HDR techniques and all of that crazy stuff. And, you know, basically making 
a scene out of a pile of images rather than like preserving what you actually saw in nature. And that was the demand and it really took off. So I started doing that and diving into it. And I learned all the techniques and started producing work that was very, you know, impactful and saturated and contrasty and epic. But ultimately it left me feeling kind of hollow and empty. Like I was just not being true to myself and that I was creating work for the demand that I thought was on social media rather than on what I felt was true to my creative vision. And I felt just dis increasingly dissatisfied with the work I was making. So, um, but around that time, I, I started seeing a lot of work by Ben Horn and Alan Brock and um, some of these large format landscape photographers um, that are younger guys um, walking away from digital to shoot large format and film. And that really appealed to me. I also really care about quality and precision. I'm kind of a perfectionist. And so the incredible control and incredible quality that you get with large format really appealed to me. And so, but at the time I was literally telling stories on my hikes of these guys to my friends and saying like, these guys are incredible. You know, you should check them out on YouTube and the stuff they're doing is, is just mind blowing. And uh, it just, but it seems so unattainable, so unreachable. It seems impossible. You know, this crazy dude, he goes out in the woods and backpacks by himself alone in Utah for like a week carrying, you know, this huge backpack with a giant wooden camera in it. Um, and, <laughs> You know, um, it just seems like something I aspire to, but I don't know if I could ever do that. And so uh, some time went by and uh, Intrepid Camera did their Kickstarter. And then I missed the original Kickstarter, but was one of the first orders. And I jumped on that. I After 12 weeks, I got my camera and I started shooting with it. And I went on a photography trip to shoot the fall colors in the Eastern Sierra in California, the mountains. And um, it went super well and I shot a whole bunch of work and I was really happy with it. And it was my first you know, successful body of large format work. Um, and also earlier that year I'd shot medium format and worked my way up and learned you know, film stocks and film exposure and all that kind of scanning and all that stuff. So um, I was able to kind of get a running start. When I got the Intrepid, um, I was super happy with it and I loved uh, working with such a lightweight, simple camera. Um, and the company actually saw my images and, uh, you know, we started kind of working together and I started writing articles for them and trip reports and stuff like that. And eventually they, um, sent me their new second gen camera to use. And that was just a huge improvement over the first gen. So I started shooting with that and then I created a huge amount of work, hundreds of images with that. And then when it came time to develop the eight by 10, uh, they reached out to me and asked if I'd be interested in helping them develop the prototype. Um, and so uh, I dove into it, helped them out with the prototype, did a lot of field testing, and I really put that thing through the ringer. It got blown over by the wind in uh, the Sierras and, uh, you know, took a face plant and it survived. And, uh, you know, we found out some, you know, various quirks with the camera, which were worked out in the final model. Now I'm currently shooting with the new Intrepid 8x10 and I've been exclusively shooting large format uh, for about two years now, uh, a little over two years, and I've been incredibly happy with it and it's really done uh, wonders for my work. It's made every shot count. Uh, the sheer cost and time required to shoot these images um, and operate these cameras really forces discipline, which has been incredibly good for my creative process and has improved the quality of my work. So. Um, continue to work with them and to continue, you know, improving and getting better at large format. And I want to share that journey with you all. And until next time, stay curious.